right, guys. It is a gloomy but warm. It is t-shirt weather. Still got the t-shirt on here. In the Finger Lakes of New York here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It is a Wednesday night, October 26, 2022. And here we are in t-shirts. I was sweating up on a ladder today, but anyway, now that my busy day is coming to a close, just sitting here finally pawing through the mainstream media and looking through various articles my alert readers are sending me. And uh, guys, I, I'm trying not to get sucked into this latest uh, dog and pony show over there and wherever the hell it is, Ethiopia or wherever. COP27 and the articles are all of these screaming doom and gloom articles, these hilarious articles uh, still talking now in 2022 about how it's not too late to keep global temperatures under one and a half degrees C. Yeah, right. And then I don't understand this. A bunch of articles about how it's just been officially announced, I guess today uh, or, or yesterday, that 2021 saw the biggest uh, emissions Maybe the the news tag is all three, CO2, methane, and nitrous oxide, all three of them at record levels last year. I, I can swear I remember talking about that uh, months ago. There's no shit Sherlock. Maybe I'm forgetting, you know, my, my doomsday predictions where I easily predicted we were going to see records in all of those. But anyway, I guess that's official, all of this stuff, to get the sabers rattling at COP27. Got no time for it. And, and the, just the, the deluge of hopium that we're going to be seeing, the apocaloptimism that we're going to be seeing. But uh, coming through all this, th there is this weird one uh, coming from the French news services. <laughs> I enjoy to see how the French press looks at American consumers. And this is uh, the French mainstream media <clears throat> asking the question, Will climate change doom U.S. truck habit? <laughs> and what they're talking about here, they're not talking about the big diesel trucks. Now, that's a whole other rant that uh, I'm sure is going around the doomosphere, how uh, diesel supplies are at their lowest ever. I guess they're already rationing diesel here uh in New York, but no, they're what they're talking about is monster trucks uh, and the electrification of monster trucks and SUVs and all of this. Um, seeing, asking the question: Are Americans finally ready to pry their cold, dead hands off of the wheel of their monster truck? The answer is no, they're not. They're just going to start driving electric monster trucks. But of course, although it's not mentioned in this article, I, you know, I've mentioned these articles where it's already coming out that these giant trucks, they don't have the power to pull trailers, which is one of the main reasons people drive them monster trucks. Now, I drive a six-cylinder Toyota Tacoma, and the only reason I moved from the four to six-cylinder is so I could drag this damn trailer around with me. And uh, so now it's coming out because the batteries are so damn heavy 
you know, the trucks themselves or so, they already have to drag around this battery. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Because you better believe uh, that Americans are not going to tolerate some pansy monster truck that can't pull a monster trailer. What's the point of having a monster truck if it can't pull your monster trailer? That's un-American. Anyway, I'm getting off. I'm going to put the little dog up here because this is getting awful heavy. Anyway, so let's dig into uh, finding out will climate change doom the U.S. Well, monster truck habit. <laughs> Okay. The U.S. consumer's love for enormous vehicles has been seen by outsiders, you know, like outsiders, like uh, people over there in, in Europe, for instance, those outsiders, as a curiosity and sometimes a sign of profligacy. Profligacy or pro, profligacy. All right, we're going to have to uh, definition of profligacy. All right. You would think five years in college with a journalism degree. Profligacy. Reckless extravagance or wastefulness in the use of resources. Yes. Or the licentious or dissolute behavior. There you go. Reckless extravagance or wastefulness in the use of resources. Does that uh, sound like an American consumer to you? Yes. Uh, a sign of profligacy. Either way, either way, uh, rising concerns about climate change seemed to create a reckoning for the behemoth-sized pickup trucks and sport utility vehicles that recently have sustained U.S. automakers' profits. Not so, according to Detroit auto giants, who have responded to the climate, climate crisis by launching all electric versions of the Ford F-150 pickup. No, that's the one that's failing the pulling the trailer challenge. The Chevrolet Blazer SUV and other best-selling giants the best-selling giants that seemingly promise the possibility that consumers can have it all. <coughs> American consumers can have it all. They can address... <coughs> Damn it! Well, it flew down my throat. I must have been choking on profligacy. Consumers can have it all. Address global warming without sacrificing. Without sacrificing. Those are the operative words of this sentence. The appeal of larger autos or larger houses or larger boats or larger planes or... Uh, anyway, I think we get the drift that there is no American who's going to sacrifice the American way of life. I mean, and I think it was Daddy Bush. Who, who was it? Daddy Bush? The American way of life is, you know, is, is not negotiable. That was at COP1, I'm pretty sure. That uh, I'm pretty sure it was COP1 where Daddy Bush, you know, saying, if you think that the United States is going to come to the table and, and suggest that American consumers are going to sacrifice, uh, you know, for something as just, uh, you know, off in the future 
as this this mythical global warming uh, ain't gonna happen. And here we are, 30 years later, same story. <clears throat> Leading U.S. environmentalists, along with the Biden administration, have praised leading U.S. environmentalists, there you go, along with the Biden administration, have praised announcements of the electric vehicle rollouts as a way to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. But absence, but absent has been any discussion of the environmental toll of large electric trucks, which require more energy to recharge and more critical materials than do smaller EVs. You know, talking, it's mainly they're, they're talking about the damn batteries that uh, obviously the, the bigger the monster truck, the more of this lithium, cobalt, nickel, all the usual suspects uh, are, are going to go in, into these damn things. In showcasing trucks, Detroit automakers are setting the groundwork for an EV era that mirrors the current profile of U.S. roadways and distinct from Europe where sedans dominate. Industry insiders like Alan Amici, president of the Center for Automotive Research, see little appetite among American consumers to go small. I'm sitting here reading this rant from a 49 square foot tiny house. <laughs> A 49 square foot tiny house. Yes, little appetite among American consumers to go small. Quote, quoting Mr. Amici, people are still clamoring for big pickups and SUVs. I don't expect a return to sedans. Yes. The trucks often marketed in advertisements Navigating rugged landscapes provide lucrative profit margins to automakers and have become so ubiquitous on U.S. roads that some consumers avoid buying smaller vehicles out of fear of how it would handle a crash with a much bigger auto. Ford and General Motors both of which report earnings this week are, are positioning their vehicles as environmentally friendly based on how they contrast with gas guzzling equivalents. Yes, here we here comes the greenwashing. Luke Tonichel, who heads the, Glee, the Clean Vehicles Program at Environmental Group NRDC, I think that's Natural Resources Defense Council, said electric pickups and SUVs represent a critical step in addressing climate change. Quote, it's incredibly important that we eliminate tailpipe pollution from all cars as soon as possible. We need broad acceptance and adoption of EVs across the market. And that is why it's encouraging to see automakers starting to make EVs on all type of car segments, including the most popular ones, meaning the giant ones. <clears throat> the focus on large vehicles was apparent at last month's Detroit Auto Show, where Joe Biden test drove the EV Cadillac Lyric an SUV made by the GM brand. In previous trips to Detroit, Biden cheered on pro production of GM's electric Hummer and the launch of Ford's F-150 EV. Here is uh, Joe Biden, our planet saving Joe Biden, in a mask, uh, test driving 
a an electric monster truck. <laughs> Joe Biden in a mask, test driving an electric monster truck. I, you know, guys. Uh, you can't make this stuff up. You really can't. I mean, there's nothing that the onion could have come up any better than that. Joe Biden. <clears throat> While GM's dis display at the Detroit show did include the Bolt, an electric sedan, greater prominence went to electric versions of three larger Chevys, the Silverado pickup, the Blazer, and the Equinox SUV. Uh, said Chevrolet Vice President Steve Majors at the show, quote, the customer has spoken. SUVs and trucks, SUVs and trucks are what the customer wants. And the customer will get what he wants. NRDC's Tana Shell notes that some sedans still sell at substantial levels in the U.S., but they are made by companies like Toyota and Hyundai. Quote, the different manufacturers are sort of carving out what they see as their specialty. The Detroit three automakers, they left the compact car and most of the sedan market years ago. Yep, yep, yep. Bertrand Ricotto, global automotive practice leader at Ducker in Detroit, said it makes more sense to focus on trucks to fight climate change. Yes, makes more sense to focus on trucks to fight climate change. Quote, you're removing the emissions from the large vehicles that are the most emitting, he said. Yes, Ricotto, who is originally from France, said the contrast between the U.S. and Europe reflect different geographic qualities in transportation systems, uh, with space in Europe more precious and public transit more integrated into regular life, I bet. Um, a December 2021 International Energy Agency bemoaned the rise of SUVs, not only in the United States, but in India and Europe. Most of the vehicles you know, out there today, still run on gasoline, meaning that, according to the IEA, quote, if SUVs were an individual country, they would rank sixth in the world for absolute emissions in 2021, emitting over 900 million tons of CO2. The analysis said SUV electrification helps, but noted that larger vehicles require more critical materials for bigger batteries and consume around 20% more energy than a medium-sized car. For Benjamin Stefan of Greenpeace in Germany, limiting global warming remains critical, meaning, quote, you sort of have to pull every lever available. Obviously, an all-electric pickup truck will have a much better carbon footprint. At least he knows the difference between carbon and environmental and an ecological footprint. We'll have a much better carbon footprint, but you could reduce that footprint even more by having no car at all, or a much smaller cars. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, and the first comment uh, is, 
electric trucks won't be practical anytime soon until battery tech doubles the range with a battery about one half the weight, electric pickups will remain impractical towing anything. When an F-150 can only pull a 3,500 pound trailer and get under 100 miles range, you know, pulling this trailer, it tells you this just is not ready for prime time. And there you go. We shall see. You know, the, the story here, guys, is that American consumers, obviously, uh, and it's not, just, and I don't even know why I'm picking on American consumers, consumers anywhere. Uh, if they have to choose between voluntarily, you know, shrinking their footprint uh, by getting smaller or sacrificing anything, if, uh, if American consumers are asked to sacrifice anything in order to do their part to save the planet, they don't give a damn about saving the planet. Uh, they're going to go right ahead and do, and, you know, get the biggest item for the cheapest amount of money that they can. That's, that, that, that's it. Big and cheap. That is the American the American consumer, big and cheap. Uh, <laughs> saving the planet has nothing to do with it. At all. Anyway, uh, I need to wrap this up because because uh, why I need to go over to Lowe's.com and start uh, getting the stuff together for the roof and siding for my 80 square foot tiny house. And that's what we're wrapping up on here in the next couple of weeks. Get out there and sacrifice your consumer and lifestyle choices to save the planet while you still can. My guys.